Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Thursday, February 23rd, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's start with the OptiTrack tracking system. These are the guys who are behind the tracking system used for the Ghostbusters experience at Madame Tussauds in New York City. They have sold basically 400 to 600 of their OptiTrack tracking solutions worldwide. Most of those went to research firms, universities, and of course, virtual reality arcades like the or like the experience at Madame Tussauds. Now, the camera they used for that was about $2,500 US. And the tracking system was meant for larger scale tracking. So, you know, you've got the Rift and the Vive for room scale. Their minimum was much larger. Think of it almost as warehouse scale instead of room scale. So you got the $2,500 camera, and then you have a tracking system that required you, and it was a passive system. It was a tracking system that requires you to have circular bulbous LEDs on everything you want to track in a specific pattern. So, bit of a pain in the arse to get that all configured. And then you were limited to how many objects you can track, which was still pretty lenient, but it had an upper limit. Well, fast forward, they've updated that system. Now they're using what they're calling an active system. So the LEDs are recessed, hidden. They don't have to be in specific patterns. The camera, instead of $2,500 US, is now $1,500 US. And they've increased the tracking space to basically 30 by 30 meters. So we're talking almost 100 by 100 feet and upgraded the tracking capability to 100 plus objects, which is huge. You could literally do stuff like laser tag arena and all kinds of other, other things, a very generous tracking uh, volume. Now, the issue obviously they have is staying in business. And we've already seen some casualties last year. So it's nice from the point of view that, you know what, they survived 2016. And not only did they survive, they've got an install base of, you know, somewhere basically half of a thousand installs. So Probably some of them are going to do the upgrade because they're going to require, you know, the more robust capabilities, larger tracking scale and volume. Plus, you've got the growing virtual reality arcade scene in China and elsewhere. That's probably going to see them sell more units. So very cool. Good for OptiTrack. Be interesting to see what they come up with. The you know, companies like The Void, for example, with Ghostbusters. Uh, we know the next project, we talked about that, but what about the third, the one after that? Definitely exciting possibilities. Next news story. We've done a couple of these now, and I don't, you know, want to kind of get into crazy detail with these. These are the Road to VR interviews with significant people in the virtual reality industry and how they feel about you know, the mysterious killer app in terms of traits, in terms of when we're going to see it. So I'll just touch on what I thought was the interesting thing. So the person they interviewed for this today is Nick DiCarlo, and he is the uh, vice president of immersive products and VR at Samsung. So when he was asked about the traits that he felt a killer app would need to have, he kind of compared it to ESPN and how that was born out of the 24-hour cable philosophy. Uh, anybody who remembers kind of before cable or when cable started getting popular, TV stations basically signed off at night. So 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 in the morning, they would sign off. You'd basically get colored bars with an annoying noise or, you know, text prompts or whatever until the morning. Cable TV put an end to that and the rest is history. But um, he feels much like ESPN for it and Instagram for the smartphone and the need to have 
you know, the camera access constantly. He feels virtual reality killer app is going to grow alongside the emerging technology for VR. What he means by that is it's not necessarily something we're going to see today or tomorrow. It may be a bit down the road, but it's going to be likely as a result, he feels, of some as of yet undeveloped VR technology. When he was asked about it maybe appearing in 2017, and this kind of leads, you know, lends a little bit of validity to what he was saying. When he was asked about 2017, he basically said, I kind of see VR as being where smartphones were during the flip phone era. And of course, that means at the very freaking beginning. So based on that, it could be half a decade to a decade before we truly see that amazing, innovative killer app. Now, personally, I hope to hell it doesn't take five years. Hopefully we start seeing gems sooner. I mean, we already are, but you know what I mean, in terms of the mainstream acceptance within the next year or two. And on the gaming side, that would be pretty cool, at least as far as most of us are concerned. Next news story, Steam Audio, promising more realistic sounds. Now, anyone who's watched my videos for a while knows I've kind of mentioned that audio has really been one of the weak points for virtual reality. There's been a lot of focus on improving resolutions, latency, visuals all around with, you know, discussions on SLI and everything in and around SLI. Basically everything to do with making the visuals better, but really no mention of audio. Now, to be fair, the last half year or so, we have begun to see a lot of innovation with audio. There was a company that Steam purchased called Il, uh, Impulsonic back in January. We talked about that. Now we have an idea of where they are going to be using that. There is a really good video link. It's not terribly long in the description below where you see the audio technology and hear literally in action. And it's done in the most simplistic way. I mean, if you Watch that without any audio, you would think, what, what the hell's the big deal? I'm looking at a sphere in a ancient looking 3D dungeon, because that's what it looks like. But they use that sphere to showcase how the audio changes as you not only get closer to the sphere, like further and closer, but as you disappear from view, or rather the sphere disappears, like say a wall starts obscuring it, and it really cuts into the audio volume. It's stuff like that that just illustrates it perfectly. And also stuff like that, that is something that is missing because not a lot of games take that into account. And if you're playing first person shooters like Onward, that could mean the difference between life and death if you've got an enemy who's just on the other side of the wall based on that audio, that could give you important cues. So very, very cool. Hopefully, we see the results of some of that uh, audio, especially on the Steam VR side. Next news piece, YouTube Spaces Studio, exploring the topic of mixed reality filming. I've had a few of you ask me about that. It's one of the things that I have planned for the channel, along with many things on the, on the back burner at the moment. But basically, it puts you into the game. So the viewer is seeing you, how you kind of see the game around you when you're in VR. For example, if you were flying a spaceship in Elite, everyone sees you actually sitting and flying the spaceship. As if they were there in that ship with you, looking at you sitting in your cockpit. So from that point of view, very cool. The, how the hell do they pull that off? not so easy to explain to people, and uh, especially if they're not very tech savvy. You're gonna get a big glazed look and you know the eventual head nod, right? So this video, perfect job, not just showing, but telling you how the hell mixed reality works, and it does it within a few minutes. So link for that below. Check that out if mixed reality is something that interested you. you maybe you wanna film in mixed reality, easy explanation. You will definitely get it at the end of that. Next news piece, 
update on the Oculus Rift that is uh, heading off into space via the Dragon delivery ship. So the International Space Station, and it was uh, Paquette who we discovered uh, is going to be the astronaut basically in charge of that experiment. Well, we got some additional details on what the hell it is that they're actually doing up there. One of the things we know about space travel, spending any amount of time in space, is bone density gets affected. In other words, you lose bone density the longer you are in a zero-g environment. One of the other things it does is it wreaks havoc with your vestibular system. In other words, your inner ear, your balance, all of that stuff surrounding inner ear, balance, hand-eye coordination, that specifically is what their tests are going to be about. How does zero gravity impact that? So it'll be very cool. Also, they mentioned the camera that they're using for the 360 degree footage, which I thought was a cool throw in. For anybody who was curious, they are using Gyroptic 360 camera for their 360 degree videos. And some of them are gorgeous. And there was a viewer who asked me about uh, a link to see the vantage point as if you were in a suit right outside the ISS looking down at Earth, which is amazing. So definitely haven't forgotten, just super crazy at work. As soon as I get a chance, I will uh, post that for you, okay? Next news piece, HTC Vive's Vive Port Developer Awards. We talked about these back last year in August. And there were four categories, first second and third place prizes, as well as some prizes for runners up. It was basically cash 50,000 first, 30 for second and 20, 15 or 20, 15 for third place. All of them also got a Vive system. The two runners up, just the Vive system. So pretty damn decent awards. Well, one of the categories was Explore and it was the Apollo 11, speaking about space, the Apollo 11 VR uh, experience. They won first place. And then um, Realities and the Body VR, second and third. Then there were also uh, another category called Create and Connect. For Create, it was basically a Northway Games puzzle game, Fantastic Contraption. A lot of us know that game. They got first place and then Soundstage and Paint Lab, second and third. Won't get into all the other ones. You can check that out on the link. I will mention they had just a random award for the end of this, which was a Community Choice Award. Not a huge amount of cash, but $10,000. And that actually went to the Chair in the Room Greenwater guy. So that was cool to see that handed out. Uh, it was a game I haven't finished. I had some frustration with it, but I know a lot of you thoroughly enjoyed that. So good to see them win an award. All right, guys, that is it for Thursday's news. Unfortunately, there will be no Exidy tomorrow for Friday Gaming Night. I've had, as you can tell from the comments section, super crazy busy at work with some server issues. So that's pretty much what I've been doing on all my free time. Unfortunately, including tomorrow. So it'll be a gaming Friday, I guess, kind of in spirit, but without Exidy here, it is not a true gaming Friday. Hopefully next week that's back to normal. Guys, cheers.